We have to talk about Scottish independence. Um, so there was a Supreme Court ruling today. Uh, basically, the um, the SNP went to to the Supreme Court to ask the question: Can Scotland, uh, without permission from Westminster, um, run its own referendums? Can Scotland essentially decide if Scotland wants to be independent? And I, I spoke about this before. Um, I think the SNP, regardless of the answer, will always have a good response to it. If the Supreme Court had said, yes, Scotland can decide on its own referendums, then the SNP would have just carried on and said, OK, cool, when are we going to have a referendum? But the fact that they said, uh, no, you can't do that, means that the SNP have been able to um, turn around and just say, well, OK, well, then in that case... Scottish independence is what's on the ballot next year um, when it comes to uh, voting, or not next year, but at the next election. Um, And it's whether you want independence or not. So let's take a look. Uh, First of all, we'll take a look at the actual judgment that was said. And then we're going to look at Nicola Sturgeon's view. And then I'm going to give you my take on it, my view on the whole thing. In a unanimous judgment, the court answers the questions before it as follows. First, the question referred by the Advocate General is a devolution issue, which means that the court has jurisdiction to cite it. Secondly, the court should accept the reference. Fresh lemonade, freshly squeed. Thank you for the input. Thank you for the input. (laughs) What's your view on Scottish independence? Spiro. (laughs) Uh, Okay, so uh, the court should accept the reference. Thirdly, the provision which was built. Um, should Scotland be an independent country? It does relate to matters which have been reserved to the Parliament of the United Kingdom under the Scotland Act. In particular, it relates to the reserved matters of the Union of Kingdoms of Scotland and England and the Parliament of the United Kingdom. Accordingly, in the absence of any modification to the definition of reserved areas, uh, the Scottish Parliament does not have power to legislate, legislate for a referendum on Scottish independence. Okay? So what this means is they're essentially saying um, you it must be decided in Westminster. And what that means is that Scotland as a country can't decide its own uh, terms for a referendum, which is uh, basically the angle that every um, every uh, independence person is going to go for because, yeah, you're, you're essentially saying that Scotland is not voluntarily here and they're going to try and paint it as a parallel to a colony or to a... Um, a captured state or a country that has no choice in its own future. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at Nicky Sturgeon. Nicola, uh, there was a highlight that I had here from The Guardian. We'll start with this. Let's be absolutely blunt. A so-called partnership in which one partner is denied the right to choose a different future or even to ask itself the question cannot be described in any way as voluntary or even a partnership at all. So this ruling confirms that the notion of the UK as a voluntary partnership of nations, if it ever was a reality, is no longer a reality. My expectation, in the short term at least, is that the UK government will maintain its position of outright democracy denial. That position is, in my view, not just unsustainable, it is also utterly self-defeating. And for the avoidance of any doubt, I believe today, just as I did yesterday, that a referendum is the best way to determine the issue of independence. The fact is, the SNP is not abandoning the referendum route. Westminster is blocking it. In my view, that can only be an election. The next national election scheduled for Scotland is, of course, the UK general election, making that both the first and the most obvious opportunity to seek what I described back in June as a de facto referendum. Okay, so, like I say, she's basically saying that it's not just our... They're framing it as the next election is not just whether we um, are allowed to... whether we want to go independent or not, but the very question of our democracy in Scotland is at stake, is what she's saying. So, um, it, it's one of these things where like, yeah, that is kind of 
technically true on this issue, but it's kind of like, it's taken a lot to kind of force that way of thinking into it, you know? So that, that's that been her basic argument. And let's see what she said on here. Okay. While disappointed by it, I respect the ruling of the Supreme Court. It doesn't make law, only interprets it. A law that doesn't allow Scotland to choose its own future without Westminster consent exposes as myth any notion of the UK as a voluntary partnership and makes the case for independence. So, um, it's, it, yeah, like, this is what I'm saying. The SNP are astoundingly good at taking whatever result they get and rolling with it and using it to advance the cause for independence. And I believe that the um, the support for independence has been gradually increasing since the, since the referendum in, I think it was 2016, was it 2016? 2015, since way back when, anyway. Okay, uh, Scottish democracy will not be denied. Today, today's ruling blocks one route to Scotland's voice being heard on independent, but in a democracy, our voice cannot and will not be silenced. I'll make a full statement later this morning, and that's that part of that is what we watched. So, I don't know if you can tell from the accent, but I am, in fact, Scottish. And uh, the first time around with the independence referendum, I was pro-independence. And this time around... I'm still pro-independence because, it, like, for slightly different reasons, but I still, I still believe that independence for Scotland is the is the better outcome. So, I guess there's the question of like, why why do I think independence is why do I call for independence? Well, I believe that England as it is right now is getting more and more right wing, more and more neoliberal, and further from the the ideals of of socialism and and left wing uh, and left wing ideals. Um, so personally, anything that diminishes the power of the UK as a neoliberal ex colonial power um, in favour of a more socialist alternative is good. And in the case of uh, Scottish independence. Um, Scotland is way more socialist than than England is. They send out free baby boxes for uh, for newborn children, uh, which is more socialised medicine. They uh, uh, tuition fees are paid for to get to to tell you something that will make you very angry if you're in England. My total to tu- my total fees when I came out of university, thanks to my tuition fees being paid for, was three thousand pounds. That's three. Not 30, not 300, 3,000 pounds. And I paid it off within two years of coming out of uni. But I, I, I got a job as a, as a developer because I studied computing. But I just as easily could have done that on a much, um, on a much lower uh, salaried or uh, income job. And as a result, I've been able to live a freer and fuller life because of that. And that was a Scottish policy. I had no idea how good it was um, at the time, but now... I am deeply thankful for it. Um, a few years ago, I looked into going for a second uh, a second degree, or it wasn't a degree, I wanted to study music. And that would have been nine grand a year, no student loan, um, on top of having to pay for accommodation and everything. That would have been in Brighton. And that would have been nine, eighteen, twenty. that would have been 27 grand if I'd done three years, you know, which is bonkers especially if you're if someone's studying music which is not a very well paid career at the end of it um it just it just would have made it impossible and being like uh, saddled with that kind of debt would have been just crippling to me so being able to go and have the opportunity of education was great um policies like that are way more prominent in scotland um as on on all sorts of other things as well when it comes to funding for the nhs uh, proportionally, Scotland will put more funding in uh, to its NHS than England will. Um, and in so many other ways, Scotland is, um, has shown leadership in its, its approach to things. I think in particular with COVID, um, during COVID, Boris Johnson was infamously bad at managing the crisis and sorting out the, the economy of it. And the there was the party gate stuff that he had, like the, the ripples of his awful treatment um of the situation are still being felt today and the uh the pursuit that liz trust had afterwards of like 
cuts to public spending and pursuing a more business approach, and now Rishi Sunak following a, a similar trajectory, though not as bad, um, shows that there is no intent to increase social spending um, in in England. But one place that is intending to do that and trying to do that is Scotland. Um, when it comes to taxing the wealthy, um, Scotland has made attempts to um, to basically land grab any land that is not being used by a, a business uh, that is just owning land for it to accrue money um, and basically trying to rewild and pursue green initiatives and all of the good stuff that is definitely more left wing, right? And Scotland as a country, I believe, has been performing better financially than England as a whole. In, in all the matters that, that money has devolved to Scotland, okay? So in terms of like the, the competency of the SNP to run Scotland, I think they've proved it. Honestly, they've, they've, they've consistently done well. Nicola Sturgeon is far more of a world leader than Rishi Sunak, Liz Truss, or Boris Johnson ever was. Um, and being on the world stage, she has shown that she can follow leadership. When when they did uh, the, the recent COP27, uh, um, uh, what was it? It was a festival, I guess, or like basically a meeting of, of countries. She announced a, uh, a development fund for the third world where to start paying reparations for climate damage to third world countries right and that is a very um that's a very progressive policy and one that most large nations did not even look at i think i believe scotland was the first ever to set up a fund like that and it's just showing leadership and progressiveness in a way that will pay dividends in the future when it comes to like who's going to want to work with scotland in the future do you think they're going to look to do you think uh, developing nations are going to look to an ex-colonial nation that's trying to hold on to its various land overseas, like Gibraltar and uh, the Faroe Isles and all these kind of places? Not the Faroe Isles. Um, I can't remember. Or do you think they're going to go to a more modern country that is trying to be more socialized and more fair? I think that the answer is obvious, that... Scotland is setting itself up to be a world player um, with other more socialized nations and re removing power away from England is, I, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a really good thing because like it's been conservative for 12 years now and even even if you're looking at it that Labour are going to win the next election, well, Keir Starmer is following an anti-immigration, anti-trans, um, pro, like, oh, it's a pro-business uh, solution he's going with. They seem to have forgotten that their name is fucking Labour, right? Even if Keir Starmer gets into the next parliament, it's going to be more right-wing, Tony Blair-esque politics. So even if Labour wins and you say, oh, well, that's not as bad as the Conservatives, it's still going to be bad. He's still an awful neoliberal uh, politician. So I think in the short term, Scotland should get out because, yeah, the... Scotland is being dragged forward with all these awful policies that it doesn't want to do. Um, and second, and second of all, there's also the question of this is this is about the question of independence, right? Or that what I just spoke about was the question of independence. But as to the question of whether we should decide our own independence, I think that's obvious. Like, if it's a union and one side of the union wants to get out. You don't get to just go, no, you can't, because you said I get to decide. It's it's a, it's a union. It, there's two there's two parties involved in this. And the as to this ruling of Scotland not being able to decide under the, the Scottish Act, is like it, it it just brings forth this huge argument of well Scotland should be allowed to decide, regardless of whether we say yes or no. The decision should be ours, not yours, because we're not um, we're not a colony. We're not being ruled by you. And even if we were, we shouldn't. Like, the, the question of, of legality is different to the question of morality and whether we should be allowed as a country to uh, leave, the, leave this union. 
And I think the I think the answer is obvious. We should be allowed to leave the union if we want to. If you get a whole massive section of people, a whole country of people, and say we don't want to be part of this uh, of this larger group, you should allow them to do that, and you should uh, respect it and and try to work with them or convince them why they shouldn't uh, go it alone or why they should stay with the union. But it's the the arguments are very thin on the ground at this point. I mean, Britain is, as a whole, it, I think the inflation is at 10.1%. Let's find out. It's UK inflation. Uh, largely because of Brexit uh, and largely because of the anti-growth policies. Um, anti-growth policies uh, as as the result of the, of the Conservatives. Uh, okay, the Consumer Price Index, it rose by 9.6 in the 12 months to over October 2022. Um, I, I believe it climbed even higher than that. Um, recently, because it was in the news. Yeah, annual inflation. Annual inflation rate in the UK jumped to 11.1% in October of 2022, uh, according to Trading Economics, which is the worst performing uh, developing nation in Europe, right? And it's coming from anti-growth policies. It's it's coming from Brexit. It's come from uh, the some of the stupid COVID decisions that were made. Uh, Liz Truss's budget definitely didn't help. Um, and frankly... Scotland wants to go the other way. They want they want to perform to to go in a more Keynesian economics uh, style approach, and they want to they want to join the European Union again, and they want to they want to look outside this sinking ship that is the UK, right? And I think they have the right to to make that decision. Um, I probably won't have the right because I live in London, but um, if if Scotland went independent, I would one hundred percent go back. Um, and as to the question of like why I'm not even living in Scotland and I can say about all this pro-independence, oh, aren't you benefiting from the union? Yes, yes I am because I am a, a high-skilled person who can who studied uh, computing, and there's there's lots of interesting things in London, but that wouldn't change after independence. There's no fucking way that London and England would turn down uh, would turn down software developers. Because, you know, everybody wants a website and everyone needs tech. Um, and on top of that, I think I think it's just better for, for Scotland if they are independent. Um, it just suits the it suits the the style of economy that Scotland has above uh, above England and London especially. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, so to summarize, um, Anything that anything that uh, diminishes neoliberal or ex-colonial powers, I am in favour of, which is why I'm in favour of independence. Uh, Scotland's a lot more left-wing than the UK as a whole, so in the short term, it should yeah, it should be allowed to go its own way and follow those uh, policies. Um, and as to the, the the question of whether they should be allowed to have a referendum, uh, yeah, I agree that Scotland should be allowed to call its own referendum, um, and the Scottish Parliament should be allowed to call its own referendum. That's that's just it. Um, yeah, so that's that's my opinions on on this. And yeah, feel free to leave questions or comments below, and I will come back and answer them as I do.